Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Sherwood Episcopal Church on this beautiful day. And I also welcome those who are watching us by Facebook Live. We are all one table and one body of Christ. It's wonderful to have you all here on, this is our Welcome Sunday, um, which is where we honor and welcome those who have joined this congregation within this last year. We'll do that at the hospitality time. Um, but also just to come back together as a community. It's been difficult over the past several years with COVID, so it is wonderful to have you here. Just so you know, uh, we highly encourage you to wear masks. It is not required except to sing. So I just tell everyone uh, to note that, and um, you can follow accordingly or however you feel most comfortable. And just a few announcements. First of all, welcome to Bailey. It is wonderful to have her again with us um, as Cassidy is away. And so thank you for being here with us today. We're glad to have you. And then officially, we have actually moved. Our office is now directly across the street on Sherwood Road, not York Road, Sherwood Road, much easier to cross there. And uh, we will be having an open house uh, at some point, um, probably in November, October or November, uh, but everything actually fit into the space. And that is miraculous because we started with a lot of things and it is amazing that it all worked out and it's quite lovely. So we're very happy to be over there at Faith Lutheran and we thank them for um, allowing us to be a part of their community. Also a shout out to Eastern Moving Company they did the move for us free, no charge, and they did a fabulous job. The owner came out, looked at the whole scene, figured out what needed to be done, and the crew that he sent the next week was fabulous. They helped move big things and were very courteous. So I do a shout out to them and a plug for them. If in event, anytime you think you might be moving, Eastern moving, Jimmy is the owner and they did a fabulous job. Uh, another thing is that UCAN, which is a part of an organization that we at Sherwood are, are a part of, United Churches Assistance Network. We have been working with them for many, many years, and their focus is for people within our Cockeysville region that we support for eviction from their home or apartment and also electricity. And if you want to, we support them financially as a church. Um, and I sit on their board and I know Joyce and Sandy have all, they've all been a part of um, the crew there. But on the last page, we can actually get $1,000 contributed to UCAN if you merely go online and select UCAN as the recipient of their funds. And this is through um, the amazing HVAC program. Um, and so I encourage you to go online and do that. So perhaps we can receive, not we, but you can, can receive $1,000, which in turn will help perhaps a family over the winter if their electricity is being threatened to be turned off. So I commend you to the rest of the announcements. Um, I look forward to welcoming the new members after the service. Uh, please join us. There's a beautiful coffee hour where we can mingle and also a lot of old pictures and history of our congregation. We have some um, everything up on the board. And also, one more thing, I'm sorry, a huge thank you to the Green Thumbs, those who weeded and put in mums and deadheaded everything. The property looks beautiful around the church. And so thank you to Susie, thank you to Laurie. Uh, I don't know who else was there, um, but to everyone. To Sheila, um, so thank you, thank you, because that was necessary. To Robin, thank you, <laughs> um, and I'm sure I'll hear who I didn't mention, but we will thank them officially for next week, but thank you for that. And now let's take just a few moments to settle ourselves, open our hearts and minds to hearing the Spirit move through us through the hymns that we will sing, through the prayers that we will lift up to God, and through the scripture that we will hear. I'm so glad that you are a part of us and here today. Thank you.
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. pray. Grant us, Lord, not to be anxious about earthly things, but to love things heavenly. And even now, while we are placed among things that are passing away, to hold fast to those that shall endure. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The readings. The first reading is from the book of Amos, chapter 8, verses 4 through 7. Hear this, you that trample on the needy and bring to ruin the poor of the land, saying, When will the new moon be over, so that we may sell grain in the Sabbath, so that we may offer wheat for sale? We will, we will make the ephah small and the shekel great, and practice deceit with false balances, buying the poor for silver and the needy for a pair of sandals, and selling the sweepings of the wheat. The Lord has sworn by the pride of Jacob, Surely I will never forget any of their deeds. The word of the Lord. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 113. We will read responsively by whole verse. Hallelujah, give praise, you servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. From the rising of the sun to its going down, let the name of the Lord be praised. Who is like the Lord our God, who sits enthroned on high, but stoops to behold the heavens and the earth? He sets them with the princes, with the princes of his people. The second reading is from Paul's first letter to Timothy, chapter 2, verses 1 through 7. 
First of all, I urge that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings be made for everyone, for kings and all who are in high positions, so that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and dignity. This is right and is acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who desires everyone to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God. There is also one mediator between God and humankind, Jesus Christ, himself human, who gave himself a ransom for all. This was attested at the right time. For this, I was appointed a herald and an apostle. I'm telling the truth. I am not lying. A teacher of the Gentiles in faith and truth. The word of the Lord. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said to the disciples, There was a rich man who had a manager, and charges were brought to him that this man was squandering his property. So he summoned him and said to him, What is this that I hear about you? Give me an accounting of your management because you cannot be my manager any longer. Then the manager said to himself, what will I do now that the master is taking the position away from me? I am not strong enough to dig and I am ashamed to beg. I've decided what to do so that when I am dismissed as a manager, people may welcome me into their homes. So summoning his master's debtors one by one, he asked the first, how much do you owe my master? He answered, a hundred jugs of olive oil. And he said to him, take your bill, sit down quickly and make it 50. Then he asked another, and how much do you owe? And he replied, a hundred containers of wheat. And he said to him, take your bill and make it 80. And his master commended the dishonest manager because he had acted shrewdly. For the children of this age are more shrewd in dealing with their own generation than are the children of the light. And I tell you, make friends for yourselves by means of dishonest wealth, so that when it is gone, they may welcome you into the eternal homes. Whoever is faithful in a very little is faithful also in much. And whoever is dishonest in a very little is dishonest also in much. If then you have not been faithful with the dishonest wealth, you will be who will entrust to you the true riches? And if you have not been faithful with what belongs to another, who will give you what is your own? No slave can serve two masters, or a slave will either hate the one and love the other, or be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and wealth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Please be seated.
Well, folks, I don't know about you, but this is one complicated story. And it has left many a preacher wondering how she is going to preach this gospel come Sunday morning. And I have to say, when I was working on this sermon, I felt the same way, and I talked with Karen Mercer, because we talked back and forth, and she was scratching her head as well. So I know at least I'm not alone. And perhaps you were left wondering, what exactly is being said? You know, I believe one can easily get stuck in the details of this story and miss the larger message Jesus is trying to convey to those gathered around him. Now, it's important to know that this is not a new scene or a new story. This is part of all of the last two and three Sundays that we have been learning about Jesus as people have been gathering around him. This is a continuation of his conversation. If you remember, Jesus has taught us through the parables in the last couple Sundays about the lost sheep, about the lost coin, and the famous return of the prodigal son is wedged in between last week's gospel reading and this week's gospel reading. And now we have a parable about the rich man and the shrewd manager. Now the scene Jesus is painting for his listeners reflects their world, a world that was ruled by oppressive leaders, a world where the wealthy protected themselves, exploited those who were the least. Even this manager in this story succeeded in using his position to exploit the powerless farmer for his own benefit. In this scene, the manager who represented the absentee landowner is about to lose his job. And so in the last ditch effort to save himself from poverty and humiliation, he devised a shrewd scheme by reducing what the tenant farmers owed their landlord, making them indebted to him. So when the manager loses his job, and he will, he can go knocking on the doors of those tenant farmers, and they will be obligated to let him in. The landowner, though, instead of being mad, is really impressed. He's impressed by the manager's quick thinking of ensuring his care at the expense of the tenant farmers. And then Jesus said, The children of this age are shrewder in dealing with their own generation than are the children of the light. Now, what does that mean? Jesus is saying to those of us who desire ourselves to be the children of the light and the disciples to whom he is addressing in his story, is that then and now, that we live in a world that doesn't reflect God's dream, but a world that, quite frankly, is unjust, that squanders its natural resources, the riches of others, a world that views the survival of the fittest as a good thing, not a tragic reflection of our culture, a world where false truth slowly erodes the moral fabric of a society and even governments. A world where individuals worry about their own condition regardless of how it impacts their fellow human being. And to change this world and to truly make it the kingdom of God we must be more responsive to what is going on around us. We can't stay, we, the people of faith, the children of the light, can't stay above the fray. We must be a part of this world in all its complexities. We must be quick on our feet and shrewd as the manager who is about to lose everything. Maybe Jesus is trying to jolt us all, all of us, out of our complacency and the belief that being a children of the light simply means being nice 
and kind and showing up on Sunday, although your priest really, really appreciates it, and not using the Lord's name in vain. Perhaps he is challenging us to recognize that if we don't live out our baptismal covenant and stand up for those who have no voice or no power or no recourse, the world we have will remain as it is, and the kingdom of God will not dwell here. So it's important to note, Jesus isn't suggesting that we follow the actions of the shrewd manager. He is asking us to take note, to observe, to learn from his actions, to use our own ingenuity, our own tenacity, to make our world a better place, not just for ourselves, as was the manager's intention, but for the least of us. Because with wealth and power comes responsibility, something that is neither the rich man nor the shrewd manager cared to even recognize. Being called the children of light means we must actively be the light out in the world that we, so that we can overcome the shrewd and selfish darkness that often shrouds God's creation. And so I ask you, and I ask myself, and I ask us as the body of Christ, do we share our wealth of skills, of currency, of ingenuity, of power, tenacity, with the intent that we will benefit not only us, but others beyond this sacred space? Clearly, the shrewd manager did it to benefit himself, but imagine, imagine if he had used his ingenuity and his clever thinking, not only to benefit himself, but everyone. He and his small corner of the world would have been transformed. People would have been set free. Today, our world isn't any different. Our culture still hangs onto the lie that our worth is measured in our positions, in our power, the accumulation of more things, homes, cars, banks account, food and land. These are the things that we can touch, we can hold on to, and impress the world that we have. These are measurable items that society values and uses to determine one's worth. That's why it's difficult to keep our focus on the riches given to us by God. Riches such as love, compassion, mercy, joy, empathy. We are reminded daily that these can only be attained by accumulating more power and more wealth. And Jesus came to tell us otherwise. One of the ways that can help us remain children of the light and not revert to children of the age is by making sure that we view our actions and our gifts, our conversations, our words, everything through a lens of our faith. It is a different lens than the lens of the world. It sometimes is difficult to find focus but it is how we must do it. Otherwise, we are what I referred to us as last Sunday as historians for Jesus, not disciples for Jesus. You know, historians, we can talk all about Jesus, we can tell them all about the stories and everything that warms our heart, but we don't truly live the life of Jesus. Do we view and respond to the world through the lens of our faith or the lens of the human world? But take heart. This is not a lone journey. It is a journey we need to take with others, others who can inspire us and push us, forgive us, and just simply love us. And that is this community all here present, all joining us remotely, a community that literally has gathered in this space for generations. Just take it in. 
Imagine what love and what compassion, what mercy, what forgiveness has been spread and lifted up in this holy space. A community that has a rich history of being faithful to their God. A community that today we will welcome its newest members into the body of Christ. You know, community members can help keep us pointed in the right direction. And I, for one, am thankful. In my e-news reflection this week, I shared with you how I was nudged by another child of the light, ever so gently, when she asked me if I wanted to reach out to someone who had left a message on the church phone. Now, the person's message didn't require any action on our part. It was merely a heads up. I may be joining you this Sunday. When I was posed with a question to reach out to the person, I didn't think it was necessary. I would see the person in church. I'll give them a warm welcome then. And besides, I had so much going on in that moment, and to extend a warm welcome, even a simple phone call, just seemed a little too daunting for me. But clearly God, God would not let this go. Something was stirring in my subconscious because it was in the stillness of the night, late at night, probably three o'clock in the morning, early morning, a few days later, when this conversation popped into my head. God has a way of nudging us when we least expect it. And I heard once again this gentle voice from the child who was nudging me. Would you like to make that phone call to the person who called? I realized that I did need to call the person who left a message that I didn't really need to respond to, not because the call caller expected it, but because that is what we do as a community of faith. We offer hospitality even when it isn't required, even sometimes when it's difficult to do. It is a faithful thing to do. And it was something that I knew Jesus would have done. And I was finally able to see the question posed through me, to me through the lens of my faith, not the lens of Nancy Hennessy, that quite frankly was cluttered with a lot of stuff. So perhaps the same is for you. Your lens sometimes gets foggy or scratched or just out of focus. Maybe you sometimes need to step away and then come back and look through that lens of faith with fresh eyes. As a community that comes together today, we can help one another see through the lenses of our faith. We can pray for one another, ourselves, and even those who naturally see through only the human self-focused lens. It was Paul who reminded Timothy in the reading from 1 Timothy today, prayer and focus on God are essential for transformation. Pray for everyone so that we will have peace. Paul was a living example of that transformation. A Jewish soldier who persecuted, killed people for following Jesus. And he was blinded by a blaze of light, only to regain that sight that allowed him to see that his former life was one of the past, and that his future life focused on Jesus and his love for him, even a sinner himself. So let us always refocus our view back on to Jesus so that we can seize the moment just as that shrewd manager did but in our case, being shrewd for the love of God, not our own selfish needs. Amen.
as we are able, I recite the Nicene Creed as found on page 7 of your bulletin. We believe in one God, Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. The prayers of the people. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. Have compassion on all those who suffer from any grief or trouble. We especially pray for those on our parish prayer list. Virginia, Lewis, Shannon T., Marissa, Casey, Wayne L., Kaylee, Lorraine, Kathy, Irene, Charlotte, Brad, David H., Joe C., J., Janelle, Francis T., Cheryl K., Robert A., Nancy D., Guy, Angie, Tom K., Karen R., Betsy K., Nancy C., Rachel, the Del Porto family, Danielle, Jim, Timothy, Ruth, Barney, Cecilia, Chip, Loretta, and Michael B. We give you thanks for the blessings of this life, including for those celebrating birthdays, especially Mother Nancy and Kathy P., as well as anniversaries. Give to the departed eternal rest. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Lord, hear the prayers of your people, and what we have asked faithfully, grant that we may obtain effectually, 
to the glory of your name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us greet one another in peace and also our friends who are watching us on Facebook Live. So glad you're here with us today. And now, my friends, let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God. Lord be with you. 
Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, for you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. And on the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension. We offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, be able to go trespass against us. Give us not the temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast.
the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. the bread of heaven.
of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of your body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and Holy Spirit, be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Depart in the fellowship of God, and as you go, remember that it is in the goodness of God that you were born into this world, and by the grace of God that you have been kept all the day long, even unto this very hour, and that by the love of God fully revealed in the face of Jesus Christ, you are being redeemed and healed and made whole. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. As we go forth into the world refreshed and renewed, we reaffirm our commitment to our mission as a congregation, saying together, God commands us to enthusiastically cast open our doors to embrace all, impacting lives through bold service, no exceptions. And now, my sisters and brothers, let us go forth to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Excellent job. Thank you.